Hello everybody, welcome back to the L1 Show Links with Friends. Today we're doing AI and nonsense stories, and today's September 22nd, which is Frodo and Bilbo's birthday. Oh, what are you doing to celebrate? Uh, I don't know. Nothing in particular. <laughs> Probably filming this show. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have another compelling quote from Mr. Elon Musk. He loves a camera. Elon Musk, AI poses a civilizational risk if not regulated. This is funny though, because the art, the information this article is based on was from a treasure trove of comments of the congressional hearing that at the time you're watching this was about two weeks ago. And Bill Gates was also there. And there was an interview with Bill Gates about Elon Musk's comments on AI and civilizational risk and blah, blah, blah. And you could, you go down a rabbit hole of Bill Gates's thoughts on Elon Musk's commentary that and in the past, and it's amazing. It's so amazing because Bill Gates says things like, Elon Musk thinks that we're gonna all live on Mars and watch as humanity destroys Earth and there's no saving Earth. And so that's why we should live on Mars. Well, yeah, we all knew that. Yeah, right? but yeah. Bill Gates' idea of how to save Earth is a little bit dystopian. <laughs> you mean modified mosquitoes? I know, well, but if we can get Bill Gates to tell us about Elon Musk and Elon Musk to tell us about Bill Gates, we'll know. Maybe we well, should just we'll, load them all into a sub. We'll have the most accurate picture. But have you seen now he's doing lab-grown fruit? Yeah. It's craziness. Well, we have a lot of fruit. <laughs> we don't need that. What if we put it on a sub, like Chris is saying? Let's put the fruit on the sub? No, we put them on the sub. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put them on the starship. Yeah. Yeah, you, you know, guys can go live in space. Have fun. Also, I love this picture because this guy is clearly Elon Musk security, right? With the <laughs> earpiece. But what about this dapper gentleman over here? No, are, <laughs> those are all Elon Musk's friends. Wait, he has so is, many friends. Is that the guy that dresses up as the Monopoly guy? Cause it I, looks I, I like it. I love it when it's because he shows up in congressional hearings sometimes and it's just like, it's just in the background, it's like the Monopoly. No, guy. that's not the because he had regular glasses. The Monopoly guy just has a monocle. Yeah. No, you should write him an angry letter and tell him. He's <laughs> You're cosplaying that, right? <laughs> <laughs> and here's a disturbing headline because uh, I have a feeling that as the economic situation worsens, they're going to be looking to squeeze more and more out of the beats. That's us, mm. the taxpayer beats. And uh, how are you going to do it? IRS deploys artificial intelligence to catch tax evasion. Now they say, don't worry, this is not over individuals. This is for hedge funds. And you law know, firms. You know how they're constantly trying to hide all their income, which is true. And real estate investors. But how many years are going to pass, I would say one at the most, before they turn it on the regular taxpayer? <laughs> and private equity. Actually, it'll work so well that they'll turn it off of all of those classes and then turn it on individuals. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's kind of where my brain went. And I was like, surely it wouldn't be that bad, but... It is usually that bad. And that artificial intelligence will have a lot of costs, not just in freedom and society and electricity, but also other resources. Artificial intelligence technology behind ChatGPT was built in Iowa with a lot of water. It talks about the data center stuff, the data center stuff that you run up against when you're doing that kind of stuff at scale. And these companies, because they're trying to be ESG, they report global water consumption. Microsoft went up 40% in the AI years. It seems like a lot. Does Iowa have any issues with water? I haven't heard anything. Well, they're going to. Uh. We also have seen a lot of things that uh, the AI companies have put out to say, like, oh, don't worry because we can actually detect AI. You can use these tools and universities are using them a lot, but it turns out there's problems. OpenAI confirms that AI writing detectors don't work. No detectors reliably distinguish between AI-generated and human-generated content. One of the reasons, not the most significant reason, but one of the reasons that this is the way that it is, is because if you're using OpenAI, they're constantly tweaking it. The data that's used as part of the model is constantly rotating in and out. And so the output that you get is non-deterministic. So something that analyzes the output to determine if an AI wrote it or not, it's not going to function reliably because the version that you ran to detect the writing is not necessarily trained on the version of chat GPT that exists today. Which is probably not going to be all that uh, comforting if you've already been failed in a college course for cheating, quote unquote. Although maybe you were cheating. And if you want to cheat more, maybe you got a new friend. The AI Assistant Wars heat up with Claude Pro, a new ChatGPT Plus rival. 
20 bucks a month will get you a better version of Claude. The big thing that they advertise here are tokens, where Claude has 100,000 tokens. And I think ChatGPT is what, like 8,000? Can we get back to ChatGPT like 3.79 when it had a usable code helper? How many times in the software game have we begged to go back to a version that everybody liked? <laughs> you never get to go back. Mm -hmm. You're just going to have to run your own version. I got to do more experiments with that. Blizzard deleted Overwatch 1. I'm never getting back. <laughs> they deleted my favorite AI helper. No. It's coming. And if you want to make your own, you'll probably be using a tool like this to decide if it's any good or not. New benchmark tests speed of running AI models. Like you said before, though, they change so rapidly. How can this possibly give you anything valuable? The AI stuff is moving so fast that I can't, I couldn't keep up even if I wanted to. There's a lot of really amazing things happening, but there are also a lot of charlatans using it as a prop. And we get release after release. Every week we see something like this. Stability AI debuts, <laughs> debuts a stable audio bringing text to audio generation to the masses. I was kind of excited because I thought this was finally like the text to speech thing, but no, this is more like describe the music you want. It's like the image generators, mm -hmm. which means that you can use it to steal Drake's fame and get illegal Spotify plays. <laughs> Actually, no, Spotify will not tolerate that. Time to upload all my favorite, uh, my favorite uh, compositions from the demo scene and see if I can get something out that's you know, in the same genre, but unique and new. Oh, might not be Demo unique. scene? Demo scene, like the, like wares. <laughs> you gonna turn that into music? No, they, 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 like all the release groups would have different, you know, it's like, this is the Razor 1911 thing and it would be like an Amiga mod and, you know, sort of vaguely techno something. And Oh, you're talking about back in the day when yeah. they played the, the MIDI music. Yeah, I'm reaching to, there's only like six people <laughs> watching that have any clue what I'm talking about. I wonder, MIDI music. Wow. I hadn't thought should, about that in a while. You should try that. You should like register for that and be like, give me piezo of <laughs> the nineties where scene. Do you See remember it? the lawless wasteland of going to a website in like the early two thousands and it would just start playing a really poorly done version of a pop song and it'd be like, Oh, turn that off. Yeah. yeah. And everything was animated. Yeah. Had the little, the baby doing the under construction. There's uh there's there was some amazing stuff there though like I you know even not being super into music I had to admire the artistic creativity of certain compositions like Amiga track that was just clever it was Star Trek samples on a on a beat and it was very well done well you know what's not it clever was not well done what's not clever is AI writing for major publications because my God are they getting things wrong. <laughs> And no matter how bad they do, they don't seem to stop. Microsoft publishes garbled AI article calling tragically deceased NBA player useless. AI should not be writing obituaries, quote unquote. There, uh, you should go read this one because uh, there's so many things that they point out here that's just insane. Now, they claim that this was not the new AI doing this, but part of an algorithm that was covered by a human. That is a lie. There's no way a human looked at this. No. No way. <laughs> a human being was trying to use AI to automate themselves. I don't know. It's Oops, I need to do that. But uh, that's sad. It's sad that that guy had to be memorialized by a robot and his last memory will just be someone calling him useless. Oh, it wasn't someone. Some what? bot. And we still have more robo-taxi drama it keeps going on, and now the people have spoken out. Protesters call for shutdown of robo-taxis in front of Cruz's San Francisco headquarters. They point out that the cruise security started doing the uh, anti-protest stuff where they're like playing loud music to disrupt them and you know various noise making and trying to just make them uncomfortable. But then someone pulled them aside and was like, no, you have to let them do that. <laughs> this is a PR debacle that you're creating here. I don't know. It's interesting if we're going back to the, if we're going into an anti-robot, the Luddites mm -hmm. will get a new breath of fresh air. And California's Senate might be some of them. California Senate approves ban on autonomous trucks. Not what? really. 
It's not a ban. It's just that you have to have a human in the driver's seat. That but pretty fair. soon, pretty soon, a human, a remote human in the driver's seat will also be okay. And uh, <laughs> this one was added for me, wasn't it? Well, this, this is no, I mean, I, I thought this it was, was, it was, was a big story. It was a big story. I think yeah. we all had a collective chuckle. At yeah, this. this is a researcher shows bodies of purported non human beings to Mexican Congress at UFO hearing. The problem with this is that the guy involved is a notorious hoax, uh, huckster and is the source of a lot of hoaxes, but also these bodies have been investigated before in 2017. And in 2017, they had the DNA of children. So why? What was the point of this? Was this a distraction? Was this... Why do it? Well, you know, some of you haven't been to weird little fairs in eastern Kentucky because there used to be a merman or a little tiny mermaid that they would put on display at a festival in my town. And it was literally like half monkey, half fish. But people would be like, wow, a real mermaid. And it's like a... No, that's classic freak show stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Like, we've always had that. As soon as I saw those photos, I was like, that is not real. They weren't selling tickets to this, were they? No. This was a government thing. Yeah. One of the people that testified in the Mexico thing said that they did a core sample for DNA and only like 70% of the DNA was in common with what they would recognize as like terrestrial origin DNA. And it's like, okay, I mean, maybe, but I don't know the credentials of who did the, like, how to, like, oh, but I'm going to need, if that's true, then I'm going to need even more evidence because that's extraordinary. But, there's none of that. And so that's a mess. And then it was, uh, they also said there were medical, quote unquote, medical implants made out of copper and osmium. And it's like, okay, well, osmium's hard to work with. And it, I mean, that doesn't, uh, as old as it is, like, it does, this doesn't make a lot of sense for other reasons. Like, but again, why wouldn't you just do more homework to figure that out? And then it talked about how the U.S. State Department was going to come visit and then they canceled. And then it's like, well, I mean, I probably would have canceled too. It reminds me of the mummy that was underneath the rock shelf as well. Yeah, but we didn't put it on display and say, look, it's an alien. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Literally like, this is a dead Native American. <laughs> it's going to a university until we can figure out what tribe it belonged to. Also, them being dead ringers for E.T. I mean, come on. Yeah. Be a little creative. Maybe that's what Spielberg was thinking. Oh, yeah, I don't know. We all uh, know. There were people in the thread about that. They were like, Spielberg knows something. And I was like, mm. <laughs> we all know that the real aliens are going to be way more reptilian. Mm. <laughs> You're just going to say ripped. <laughs> They're going to be huge. Oh, those guys had no gains. See also Hillary Clinton. <laughs> but uh, here, how about an actual alien? Although I guess he's not an alien. He's from Earth, but he lives on another planet and he's doing amazing things. First experiment to produce oxygen on another planet has come to an end. It was able to produce enough oxygen to keep a terrier alive for 10 hours. Is there a must to do that? <laughs> <laughs> He's breaking down carbon dioxide to harvest the oxygen. Now, if you scale that up to something bigger than a exploring robot, you probably could keep some people alive. Yeah, there was, interesting. you know, just like when we detonated the atomic bomb, there was a slight worry when we might set the atmosphere on fire. There was a very slight worry that the for some reason the carbon dioxide on, in the martian atmosphere wouldn't work chemically the way that we expect it to to produce breathable oxygen but we've experimentally verified that if people had to live on oxygen converted from martian carbon dioxide they can no oh, the terrier could well, for 10 space hours. terriers yeah <laughs> And, uh, you know, it is our way of doing things. It's the American spirit to just try it and see what happens. And that's exactly what we did here. And not surprisingly, the unexpected happened. Asteroid behaving unexpectedly after NASA's, uh, NASA's, NASA's deliberate dark crash. Possible reasons for explanation, an uneven distribution of mass in the asteroid, which is weird, though, because we thought we modeled that pretty good. We also didn't expect the massive debris field. That it would generate we've learned but now also it's slowing down so none of what we thought would happen happened after we launched a missile at a space rock i wish this wasn't like redneck nasa <laughs> just crash into it well at some point we have to admit that maybe nasa is not getting the most bang for their buck and maybe they're just trying to dream up things to do to get new budget NASA finally admits what everyone already knows. The space launch system is unaffordable. 
Yeah, Elon Musk is probably uh, already drunk. As much, yeah, I think he's just permanently drunk at this point, right? As horrible a person, well, he's drunk on his own power. Well, uh, as horrible a person as he is, you got to admit he did fix the whole space game. Yeah, but that also makes me sad because what if you know, if Elon Musk can do that well with that, how have we gone so wrong as a society that that's what it requires in order for somebody to dislodge the dysfunction? Or is Elon Musk a figurehead? <laughs> and that somebody else is actually funding and dealing with all of that. But, uh, you know, the space game, it's its popular. Russia tried a new moon mission. India got it. Their robot is asleep right now. We're waiting to see if it can wake back up. And now... Japan's H-2A rocket launches heading toward the moon to attempt a landing. It's getting crowded up there. I always feel like this is a positive story, especially when someone does it successfully. Yeah, a moon that can make it, a, a, moon, a rocket that can make it to the moon. That's actually very impressive. Yeah. Why did I have this in here twice? I don't know. And moving on to some authority misconduct. This one is, uh, seems like a fun headline, but if you get under that, it's kind of disturbing. <laughs> Man walked naked out of the shower and found Mountie in his bedroom, lawsuit says. This guy has an amazing case. The, the CBC doesn't really go into a lot of details, but the guy's already found uh, filed a lawsuit. They apparently broke his door to give him a speeding ticket or no, it was a missed stop sign ticket, something like I'll, that. I don't know if they admit to breaking his door, but they said when they knocked on the door... It disintegrated. It opened. Yeah. And in their insane authoritarian world, that was a sign that there might be distress in the house. Yeah. It's like, hey, we banged on the door and it opened up. Better investigate. Yeah. There could be something bad in here. My mental image of this is like the cop was on the horse when he came in. It was a sheep. Oh. So not only did he get seen naked, but he got seen naked by a girl. Oh. Yeah. So. I think you just automatically get cooties if that happens, right? <laughs> I, really, I really hope that there's a video of that because I always remember the thing in, the, in Florida where the the uh data lady was arrested and they were like no we respectfully knocked on the door and waited for her to come to the door and blah 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 and then the video was released and the dude was like you know like full arm pounding on the door like as toddler hard as having possible. a meltdown yeah and there was a camera on the other side of the door and so like you could see the daylight like every time he would he would pound on the door you would see the door like go in and come back uh two or three inches because and it's just like well yeah if you're gonna pound on the door that hard it's probably gonna break I don't know what it is in Canada, but I think it's probably the same as you don't have to answer your door. Even if it's the cops, just don't answer the door. But if you don't, they're going to pull this kind of crap because they're corrupt. But you know who wasn't corrupt and in fact was just having a good time with some candles and some yoga? <laughs> Ritual mass murder, quote unquote, report in Chapel St. Leonard's was actually a yoga class. So somebody saw a bunch of people laying on mats, had no idea what yoga was, apparently, assumed that everyone was dead and called the police. Well, they were, there was one person moving around. It was this gal. And she describes she had some sort of like ceremonial outfit and she was, you know, dancing around doing some new age stuff. So the people walking their dogs thought that she had just murdered everybody and was like, you know, praising Satan. <laughs> so they immediately got on the phone to the cops. What a weird like series of like things to go through <laughs> mentally. Fabulous. Well, have you never seen an exercise class? No. Well, they weren't exercising. They were like yoga. That's, totally relaxed. That's burning calories. No, no, but they were done with that. They, they were probably were, just laying on their mats. Right, yeah, yeah they stretching. were like in the, yeah. the relaxation phase, and she was like banging a drum, you know. It was real new age stuff. Yeah, but, I mean, yoga's kind of that way. Yeah. But still, like, I've been exposed to yoga, and we live in the middle of nowhere. Like, how do you <laughs> not know what's going on there? Just Vivid imagination, Fun I suppose. Times. And I love to have a drunk driver story, and I love how unreasonable drunk drivers can get. Coralville man who allegedly raced an ambulance has been arrested for uh, operating while intoxicated. And the ambulance driver is the one who called 911, and they described how all the other cars were getting out of the way of the ambulance, and this guy was trying like blocking techniques for racing. Oh. <laughs> he thought he was in a race. I'll show him. Yeah. yeah, it turns out he was on something. It's, it's terrifying how many of them are out there every day. 
And it's also terrifying when you have a story like this, which is, uh, as usual, these small stories, they do not give you the level of detail that is required for this kind of madness. Man indicted for allegedly breaking into Clarkson Daycare, pretending to be baby Danielle. He's 66. Not his first time. Ooh. In fact, in the past, he had broken in before and left money with a note saying, hey, you should really get adult-sized diapers. They did not. And in this last break-in, he actually had to tape several child diapers together before putting them on. If I was a parent and my kid went to this daycare, they wouldn't be going to that daycare anymore. <laughs> well, I mean, it's not the daycare's fault, is it? I guess they could have done more in the previous. Yeah, if he's been there before, who's to say he's not going to come back? But they didn't know who it was. He I mean, signed all of his papers, baby Danielle. I think around here, if that happened and there was anybody there, they would just shoot him. So like, we'll figure also, this out later. I, you know, it's probably daycare doesn't have a lot of money to throw around, but maybe take a collection from the parents. It's like, hey, we need some cameras. Yeah. We need a, a door buzzing system to keep baby Danielle out of here. <clears throat> You're awfully nasally today. Yeah. Uh, do we have a re recurrence we need to worry about here? Uh, so far, no. You getting the long C? I hope not. It has been very dry. I had a pretty nasty headache yesterday. Yeah. I had a, oh, the doc said it was uh, sinuses. That doesn't describe a disease. That's just a body part. No, like a sinus. <laughs> he said I had sinuses. <laughs> I have a nose. Well, you have sinuses, but a lot of uh, Canadian libraries don't have books. Empty shelves with absolutely no books. Students uh, and parents question school boards library weeding process well listen the people on the school board they've never read a book and so it's taking them a long time to read a book and get it approved for the library but this isn't the school board well the school board had like some rules they have like a cutoff date right it's ever how many years ago 20, 2008 was and it seems like maybe the librarians were supposed to go through one book at a time and make judgments and they were just like i ain't got time for that anything before 2008 gone just get rid of it well i'm glad that math and science didn't happen before 2008. are you telling me all the judy bloom books are gone i don't know what that is but i bet they are you gotta make room for all those new books those ai generated books <laughs> forget asimov and here's a great video we won't play the video but jump in the one tab and watch it for yourself because it is astonishing town of portugal flooded by red wine after distilleries tanks burst not just one tank, like the two main storage tanks gone. That was a lot. 600,000 gallons. Now, once again, there's a still frame of it. Yeah. Then what do you do about this? Because it all flowed down the road and went into the soil. So much like the, uh, the train situation, the uh, East Palestine train, they're going to dig up all that soil and just take it somewhere else. Would it... I guess it depends on what stage the wine and stuff was in. Would it make a huge difference i guess it would maybe acidify the soil too much but it oh. is an organic product i would assume but probably could lead to some bad you know like fungus or it might yeah kill off bacteria. some of the microbial stuff in the soil oh. and you know what else might kill some stuff eating pennies you shouldn't do it family discovers pennies inside uh, mcdonald's chicken nuggets a safety concern arises uh, now they point out and I assume that they had one that wasn't busted open that they could prove it with. But they point out that they don't make these nuggets in the store. This happened in the manufacturing somehow. McDonald's supply chain, someone is inserting pennies. That's so strange. <laughs> That'd be a terrible thing to bite into, too. What's the motivation there? That's just terrorism, right? At least you're not going to get choked on a penny because who swallows a nugget whole? So, someone in the comments is going to be like... <laughs> Actually, I prefer to just. <laughs> yeah, but biting into it would be where you damage your teeth. You got to break your nuggets yeah. open. You got to do a security check on your nuggets. But I bet McDonald's will start like cutting them in half just to make sure. <laughs> and uh, would you put a cursed painting in your home? I might, even though I don't even put stuff on my walls. I might consider this young gal. Cursed painting sells for more than 1,600 pounds after twice being returned to a charity shop. One of the people that returned it said that there was a weird black specter following her around, so she brought it back. Is it, when you have something like that happen, do you just think, okay, what are the last five items I brought yeah. into the home? What changes have I made recently? 
Got to be the painting, right? She's so well, I changed my shampoo. Maybe I should change back to my other brand. And the fashion world is insane. <laughs> this is an amazing video. Yeah. It's so insane that when people do insane things for attention, they don't immediately know that's what's going on. Imposter does catwalk in trash bag at New York Fashion Week and no one notices until security intervenes. You can kind of tell because the whole time he's walking, he keeps like kind of looking behind his shoulder <laughs> and then then the security guard comes running down. Oh, have you seen the video of Xi Jinping walking that red carpet? No. Oh, you got to watch that. I can't remember what country it was in, but they're doing like a red carpet for all the leaders who are visiting to come out. And he, the door opens up and he comes through and he's like, yeah, he's walking around and his aide or interpreter or whatever comes running to get behind him. And they physically just like slam him in the door and like slam the door. They attack the interpreter and she's walking down the, and he starts to look back and he's like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? You can tell somewhere in his mind he's like, am I about to be assassinated? Yeah. <laughs> Is this how it ends? That's a great video. I wish I could remember the country. And uh, you know what? This guy should be the caretaker of the cursed painting. Yeah. I think we could trust him. <laughs> Quote, unquote, Indiana Jones of the art world helps Dutch police recover stolen Van Gogh painting. I don't, maybe it would, uh, uh, Indiana Jones? No, it would be Benoit Blanc, right? I could have sworn that we covered when this was stolen because it was a couple years ago that the painting was stolen, but it recently got recovered. Look at this guy. And the police were all his swagger. basically just said, hey, we can't. He's involved. That's all we can say. <laughs> Think of all the hijinks, though. Yeah. The screenwriter's going to have a field day with that. So, so much hijinks. <laughs> uh, he's definitely going to be carrying that newspaper around to show the girls in bars. So. <laughs> he's got it framed in his house. And, uh, you know, this is just a puff piece from BBC, but I thought it was, you know, one to love Star Trek so much. What was your exposure to the animated series? I, I got to I gotta watch the animated series growing up, yeah. You like it? You thought it was okay? It was okay. They used this scene a lot. And they used the same, tra they, they did the whole, like, scene recycling thing. Like Scooby-Doo, where it's limited, like... It's called walking. a limited animation. Yeah. Because Masters of the Universe was like that, too. Yeah, yeah. they used it a lot. Like, 30% of the episode was just in a can. But it's been a long time. Legacy of Star Trek the Animated Series, 50 years on. How about the fact that old Shatner's still going? Yeah. He's just, he's full of that much hate. <laughs> <laughs> there was a there was one write-up I read on this, and it talked about how uh, James Doohan just didn't want to do anything. And, you know, Shatner would call him up and, like, try to be friends, and he was just like, Bill, I just, I don't like you. <laughs> just, you kind of respect it in a way when yeah. you're just that up front. <laughs> Well, it's better than having somebody hanging around with you that hates you. Yeah, mm -hmm. It's just like, I don't mind to go to the conventions and show up on stage with you and, you know. Do our jobs, I, yeah. Yeah, but he's just, you know, hang out with the fans and, you know, that's good retirement money. But I just, you know. I don't I, ever want to get coffee with you again. Yeah. Well, George K definitely hated William Shatner, too. Yeah. I mean, they, he has a lot of distaste for them. And uh, there was even there was even a, a write-up where... Uh, James Dewan was was saying it's like you know one time Bill was act, acted surprised and he was like I don't I don't understand what I ever did to you know do whatever and it's like well Bill I'm not going to help you figure that out just, <laughs> let's just leave it alone. Now last week we had a story about a volleyball gambling ring. Now, I'm not sure exactly how that worked, but now we have a similar one. However, this is a much larger problem. The unraveling how a small town police officer took down one of the largest match fixing rings in tennis. What a story too. The Washington Post put a lot of effort. I mean, this continue thing, reading. It's got it's it's in like five acts. You know the uh the guy that brought down house in like season three of Trigger. House? Yeah. Detective Tritter. That that kind of reminded me of that. It's just like that little guy, you know, he just latches on. It's like, I'm going to bring down the tennis ring. It's like, okay. Now, this is not the, uh, what's the name of the big tennis tour that they do? Wimbledon? It's not that's, Wimbledon. That's one of the locations. Oh. Anyway, it's not that. It's the lower level, like the AAA tennis. And these guys were fixing matches and paying off the players and doing like online gambling and using money mules to go. And they were pacing, placing bets on like, I think that in the fourth set, he's going to score this many faults. It was just crazy bets. And they were winning every single one of them. And this guy worked it all out. He got to the bottom of it. It was some amazing detective work, actually. And they got a, a confessions from the players, from some of the players. 
and he didn't do it with any sort of mass surveillance. <laughs> just, well, just being weird watching the... I mean, the matches were televised, yeah. so he did have that. <laughs> I guess that is a form of mass surveillance. Yeah. And this is a crazy one because this is being described as like revenge stuff or illegal stuff when in fact, I think it was quite voluntary. Yeah. Candidate in high stakes Virginia election. I'm going to substitute the headline here a little bit. Probably had an OnlyFans with her husband. And so it's like, oh, is that grounds for not being able to run for election in something? So she's more or less said, yeah, uh, that's us. But what are you going to do? You got to make ends meet. Was the video released with their consent, though? Like they knew they had made it. But here's the thing. Kind of. It's not quite gray. I would say it's like grayish white. What they did is as a couple, they went on, can we say that website's name? Mm. Chat. The, yeah. The, the thing. Oh. It rhymes with, uh, it, yeah. You know, it's that. You know what? Yeah. They know. Uh, it's, it's chat or what you used to fish with. And so they went on there and they were hanging out naked and doing stuff, but then they were trying to get people to give them tokens. I don't, I don't know how that site works, but apparently I can like tip you with real like money. Bits. And they were like, Hey, if you give us some bits, we'll do this or that or whatever. Now that site is supposed to be ephemeral, right? Like it's, but then there was a uh, record bait, which was a site that records everything that happens on that site. Uh-huh. If you're watching it. So it was not actually ephemeral. So they it never is reminder. They, they put themselves out there thinking that it was going to go away, but somebody got the recording. Mm. And now that she's running for office, it's been released. Yeah. But it, it was her husband. It wasn't like a Oh scandal. yeah, I would say it's like it's your husband. It's not really that big of a deal, but okay. like it's it's not cool that someone released it without their consent. Yeah. And it may actually be against uh there's a, there's like the revenge laws that it may be against that this was recorded and re-released without their consent. Yeah. Maybe. But if you're going to go into politics, I would say that's not a good move. Yeah, uh, definitely not a good move. No, for but, that I, but I also think that for anybody that's under 50, given the political and voting landscape, I don't think anybody cares, especially it, given the context. In 20 years, we will have nudes of all of our leaders. <laughs> Maybe what, that should be a requirement, right? Whether they've made them voluntarily or not, it's just like, hey, AI assistant. <laughs> yeah. We'll yeah. have images of them doing all kinds of things, but half of them will be fake. Yeah. What if to prevent that sort of you know coercion, as part of going into politics, you have to submit a video? Yeah. Well, uh, people gamble more when the economy gets bad, so I imagine that DraftKings is probably doing quite well. And they're always coming up with new and fun bets to put out there. It's just like, oh, it's in, it's topical. You know, it's in the news. Bet on it. DraftKings apologizes for sports betting offer referencing 9-11 terror attacks. Oops. Should we not have done that? Was that insensitive? <laughs> so they had a special bet where all three major New York teams had to win a game. And it was the never forget bet. Oh. Yeah. Unfortunate. Also unfortunate that people actually did it. And on to the animal section. And this was a tragic animal story. Now we've been covering a lot of like, remember the cat that was living with the, yeah. and then there was the capybara and mm. uh, what was their animal? A fox or something? Capybaras live every animal. Well, orangutans do not. Orangutan launches a possum out of an enclosure at a zoo as horrified visitors scream. There's a video of it. You should watch it. Well, Maybe be careful watching it. <laughs> it's a little upsetting. Well, you don't see the actual impact. Yeah. You just see him flying through the air. But at that height. But an orangutan is very strong, very strong. to have been able to do that yeah, at they, that velocity they, and exit angle. The primates have a lot of strength. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so the people at the zoo were like, well, we're not sure exactly what happened to it. That's a lie. It that fell is in, literally a video right yeah, there. It fell into another primate enclosure and they did clean it out. It was passed on. So, uh, yeah, this was a, a local possum that snuck into the enclosure somehow. You don't know that. He could have been international. <laughs> he could have flown in, <laughs> taken his kids. He was like, his, his mom, like the baby mom is there with all the little possums clinging to her, and they're like, what, What's dad doing? Frank, don't do this. I got to, I got to, Mary. I got to see what it's like in that enclosure. 
And uh, again, another week of weird airplane experiences, just horrors in the air and people not tolerating it. Couple is demanding a refund after they were seated next to a drooling and farting dog on a 13 hour flight. I pay for Rue to do that next to me yes. every day. <laughs> I think we're, we've gone too far with the service animal stuff. Like I understand, you know, if you have like maybe a vision problem or whatever, but these whole, the anxiety service dogs, we got to be done with that. I always thought you had to put them like they have like the under area that you can put your animals in if you're traveling. They said not only did they not have that, but because they had to get the, the trolleys up and down the aisle, the dog actually had to be under all three of their legs. Oh. Yeah. And he was, she described how the husband was wearing shorts and his leg was covered in dog drool by the end of the flight. And it was I mean, farting the entire time. <laughs> dog farts are no joke either. Like. Rue does the silent but deadly, and it's oh, it's awful. What if it was the old joke about like blaming the dog, and it was actually the other passenger? Just that was really <laughs> the whole time. And here's an alarming scene. We had the, remember the zombie deer. This doesn't appear to be that, but it's certainly a, a, something that you don't want to see. A mysterious main deer is turning purple. There's my, some really weird photos in this article. My money is on blood disease, and the purple is mixed oxygenated, not oxygenated blood. There were several good theories in the comments on this article. Some people were like, well, maybe he walked through a blueberry patch or pokeberry patch. <laughs> <laughs> there was one where someone was like, oh, he might have gotten like shot by a hunter, but it didn't kill him. And that was one of the theories. But what about those big yeah, the, lesions? Yeah, I don't know what that is. Yeah, I got That's, bit by a tick. He's got, oh, oh, probably. It's oh, a big tick. He's, he can't be comfortable, right? We should no. probably kill that deer. Yeah. Just for its own sake. And finally, a little bit of a heartwarming story. This is the best we could come up with this week. Well, Rescuers move a 5,000 pound concrete slab to rescue a kitten that went up a drain pipe. Look at it. Krista, you should get that kitten. That particular kitten? Yeah. Hmm. I haven't seen the mama cat or baby kitten this week. So there's room, you're saying? There's room in that Room home. for the concrete room kitten. Room for another cat. Oh, you can name him Cement because you have so such a hard time Cement, pronouncing it. Cement. <laughs> you can name Cement. Him, you can name him S M I N T. Cement. <laughs> and then everybody's like, well, that's a weird name. You have a fun anecdote. No. Nah. <laughs> All right. Well, that's it for the week, chat. It is actually the week this time. We will see you guys next Tuesday. Thanks for hanging out. Bye. Lino.com. Yeah. Oh, not use just code. Code. You gotta use our code. Use the link. Yeah, don't just go there. Use our code.